Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, watching, hanging out. I appreciate it. Hope your day's going well. I'm in Luminar 4, and today I'm going to do a video about um, the texture overlay filter or tool. So this is going to be a deep dive. Um, let me show you an image. This is an image I uh, did a video about recently, and this is what I often do with textures. Um, I'll put a link to that video there. I'm not going to cover that again. I'm going to do something different, but I wanted to point out that I'll often use textures um, in different ways, like in this case, I used it just as a sky replacement. So you, you have a lot of different options, uh, creatively speaking, with textures. And it's something that I didn't use a lot when, uh, uh, like in years past, only in the last probably three years or so have I kind of gotten into using textures. And now I love them. There's so many things you can do. So today's video is going to be this photo. Uh, it starts out as a shot um, up the River Liffey in Dublin and I turn it into kind of an artistic thing using textures. So I'm going to walk through how I do that. Let me reset this and we'll get going. By the way, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button. Also give me a thumbs up if you like my videos. That helps me a lot and lets YouTube know that you appreciate what I'm doing. I hope you do appreciate it. So thumbs up for that. And of course, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about it. Let's reset this and get going. Okay, here's my base image. So step one, I'm going to get into the crop tool. I need to straighten this guy. Uh, a little bit and I'm gonna go 16 by 9 just because there is a lot of dead space in this photo um, and I'm gonna just kind of crop out some of it so something about like that I think that's probably close enough let's hit done okay and we're ready to go now I, I make a number of adjustments to this photo I'm gonna start with the texture overlay because that's obviously what this video is mostly about but I want to show you some of the ways that I customize things in addition to just slapping a texture on there because textures can often just be applied to a photo and you're kind of not maybe doing a whole lot because it, it, you know, it sort of uh, adds the look that you're going for. Uh, but I tend to customize further, as you may imagine. So texture overlay is on the creative tab, which is this second tab here. You just click load texture and you go find one. I'm going to use this texture. Uh, this was a texture from a pack that I purchased from a photographer named Ann McKinnell. I'll put a link down below to the texture pack. It's a great pack. Um, she sells it on her blog. I bought it uh, a number of months ago. I just like this kind of stuff. So here we go. It defaults to just dropping onto your photo and it defaults to 50% opacity. So let's walk through the texture overlay settings and then I'll show you what I do to this photo. So um, these first two buttons here allow you to swap the texture around so you can flip it horizontally and this one allows you to flip it vertically. So if you have an orientation, uh, maybe you like the texture but not the orientation, you can flip it either direction. I'm going to leave it the way it is. Blend modes um, basically change how your texture will interact with the photo below it. So as you circle through and hover over these, you can see what the different examples look like. Now in this um, case, I actually leave it on the normal blend mode, but depending on like if you have a snow, like snowflakes falling, I'll often use screen mode and that'll look better, but everything, it just depends. There's, there's no here's what you do every time kind of thing. I tend to cycle through these. That's kind of fun and interesting, very intense, not what I'm going for. Um, I like that hard light. I like soft light as well. Um, and then sometimes this uh, color or luminosity will come in handy, but I'm going to stick with normal here. The point is check them out and experiment. Next is opacity. So you can just increase or decrease the amount of the texture that's being applied. That is definitely something I would um, experiment with on any particular texture. Zoom allows you to zoom in or out. So you can, you know, bring forward or scoot back the texture. Obviously, if you scoot back too far, you're going to have it go off the uh, off the page. I generally use that uh, sparingly if I use it at all. Brightness will increase the brightness of the texture or of course to the left will darken it. Contrast actually increases the contrast between the texture and the photo beneath it. So that's also kind of handy. Saturation will of course increase the saturation. Keep in mind these are adjustments that are applying to the texture not to the photo below them. So I'm increasing the saturation of the texture or decreasing the saturation of the texture. And then hue just allows you to kind of roll the hue and see if you want to kind of change the overall color look of the texture. So if I go this way, it becomes more green and then more kind of, you know, into the blues and then gets into the kind of purpley reds, which actually looks really cool, I think. And going this way, you can kind of see, this is just a rolling texture slider. It, um, again, just depends on the color look you're going for. I'll actually use that some in this video. So that's a quickie on the texture um, overlay filter. Now, 
Here's what I do with this uh, particular photo. The first thing I normally do is mess with opacity because I think 50 is a little too heavy. Um, in this case, I'm gonna go down to about 30 or 31. I just wanna drop the opacity because it's a little too high. But here's a little trick and that is, I'm gonna go say mask and I'm gonna use a luminosity mask. So that's gonna apply it more heavily to the brighter parts of the photo. There it is, now it's applied with uh, a luminosity mask. And if I take opacity back to 50, it actually doesn't look that bad. I still end up coming down to 30, but um, what I often will do if I'm using it with a luminosity mask is just apply the luminosity mask first and then try the opacity simply because it does have a big impact on how it looks in the photo. Now I'm gonna bump up the contrast, and so I went to like about 38 or 40, something like that, and I'm gonna bump the saturation a little as well, and that's me just kinda of customizing the look that I'm going for before I get into some other filters. And in this case, the hue, I do roll that down, and I go in into the, I was about negative 54, so I'm getting kinda of more into the pink and purple realm, and if I turn this off, you may remember, maybe you don't, there's a little bit of pink in the sky, so I chose that hue because this was a sunrise or sunset, I can't remember, I think it was a sunrise in Dublin. Um, and I just wanted to bring up some more of that pink. Again, uh, as you can kind of tell from the final result, I'm going for more of an artistic look in this photo. But um, that's, um, so, so rolling the hue to that direction sort of helped me with that. And the only other thing I do here is I'll go into Edit Mask and I'm gonna get Brush. And if I show you the Luminosity Mask, let me turn that on, there you go. You can see that, and what I wanna do is, actually I'm gonna take the opacity down to about 30 and I'm gonna to go to Erase. And what I wanna do is basically just remove some of the texture from the buildings. And I tend to do that a lot when I'm um, am using like a city shot or really, you know, really any kind of shot where there's a structure that's in the photo. I like to slightly remove some of the texture uh, from that structure simply because um, sometimes I feel like it kind of clashes a little bit. So I'm gonna do something like that. Low opacity, not a lot. But what I don't want to do is have the texture completely cover up the buildings. And so that's why I use the luminosity mask, which is going to apply it more heavily to the sky and the water, because they're the brighter parts of the image. But then also use the brush mask to come in and erase it um, at a low opacity from the buildings. Okay, now uh, kind of the fun stuff. And this is what I always recommend doing is I like to get the texture looking the way I want it to look. And then I come in and kind of do my creative edits. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go a little bit to the left. Um, something like 7,800 or so, just to make it a little bit more blue. And I think the tint's actually fine. Okay, smart contrast. I wanna get a little bit more contrast in the photo. And then I do wanna bump the shadows a little bit, like maybe around 20, 25, something like that. Next is AI Enhance. I'm gonna come over here to the uh, AI Accent and I'm gonna to go to a, like, you know, maybe mid 40s, something about like that. And then AI structure, I'm gonna go negative on this, about negative 42, just kind of softening up the details. Since it's kind of an artistic vision here that I'm uh, achieving, I'm not really super concerned about having crisp details in the buildings. So I'm applying this AI structure amount that's going negative, which softens the image. I'm applying it globally. Okay, a little saturation and a vibrance. I like those quite a bit. So there's saturation, there's a little vibrance. And this is you know just kind of having fun with color to be honest. And the next step here is golden hour, and I'm going to go to about I don't know maybe 35 or something here. Okay, so so far I feel like we've come pretty good ways. There's the before, there's the after, but I got a few more things I want to do. I'm going to jump over to the pro tab, get advanced contrast. First I'm going to go into highlight, so maybe something about like that, and give it a balance shift as well, maybe into the 40s. Um, if you're not familiar with Advanced Contrast, I did a video about that recently, which may help you get more comfortable with that tool. And I'm gonna use Midtones as well. So I'm gonna go, uh, you know, kind of high 30s here and maybe low 50s here on the balance. So let me show you the before and after. There's before, a little bit brighter image, and after adding Advanced Contrast, and especially the balance sliders, they really helped it control the light and the way the contrast is being applied to the image. Okay, so I like that. Now I'm gonna pop over to adjustable gradient. In this case, I'm not gonna set the orientation. I'm just gonna leave it kind of in the middle. I am gonna bump up the contrast in the top of the photo. I'm gonna to go to mid 30s here, so like 34. And then for warmth and vibrance, I'm gonna give that a little bit of a bump as well. So something about like, uh, maybe about like that. I'm just playing with color and contrast here, and I'm gonna do the same thing in the bottom. Here the contrast is gonna go mid-20s, so you know, 25, 26, something like that. And then for warmth and a vibrance, I'm gonna bump them as well. So I'm gonna go like 21 on warmth, 
and something like 30, 31 on Vibrance. You can see I'm getting kind of a painterly, saturated, colorful look. Basically, this is kind of looking like a watercolor, which is kind of the look that I'm going for here. And now I'm gonna go down to Color Enhancer and get Split Color Warmth. I'm gonna go positive about 18 or so here, and on the cool, I'm gonna go about negative 14 or so. I also did a video about Color Enhancer that'll help you with that. But that was just a little pop of color. You can see the before and after. There's before and there's after. It's not significant, it's kind of slight, but that really gets me to my finished product. So here's the before and after. There you go, regular kind of boring shot. I mean, there's a little bit of decent light, so I took the photo, but I wasn't really super excited about it. And now I turned it into kind of a watercolor. A lot of that was, of course, based on the texture that I chose which was from that texture collection that I mentioned. As I said, I'll link to that down below. But wanted to walk through texture overlay, give you some tips and tricks on how I use that, like luminosity masking and brushing to erase, or you could also do the opposite, which is increase the opacity um, with the brush mask. And then the various settings walk through. And then the rest of this was kind of a workflow. And my point with that was really, uh, you know, don't just put a texture on and say I'm done. Continue to like evolve your image by experimenting with different f uh, filters, sliders, tools, whatever you want to call them. It's a great way to just kind of explore creative output in Luminar 4. That's how it went today, my friend. So I appreciate you watching. As I said, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Give me a thumbs up if you haven't and leave a comment. Let me know what you think about it. Thanks for watching. I'll be back really soon with more videos. So thanks again. I'll see you soon. Have a great day and adios.